I'm Joyce Reed, and I want to welcome each and every one of you to our show today. Our program uh, is so special because we have a special lady with us that Don will uh, introduce in just a minute. But we do thank you for joining in and being part of the Crossing Paths family. Now, Don, you tell about this beautiful lady that's going to talk to us today. Well, I don't know. I see some <laughs> pictures there that uh, yeah. looks like a clown, you know, uh -huh. but we got a surprise for you. And you know what? We can use our talents to do God's work. You know, I, I, I've known this lady a couple years ago. She did a, uh, for our picnic, uh, she did a, a acting as a clown. And she has come a long way, and she's available if I write to go into churches and so forth for kids, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, Pat Troyer, which is a very part of our ministry, has recommended her, and she said, hey, Don, you got to get her on again. I said, okay. <laughs> And Pat arranged it, and so we thank you for that. But, you know, the most thing is, people, you have a talent out there, whoever you are. And we're trying to bring that out into the Shenango Valley. We had a, a six-year-old boy that was preaching on this television ministry. Amen. We had a, a young girl that went to college uh, related to Joyce. She gave her testimony. So we don't only just have older people. <laughs> we have younger people on. And we have a young lady here today, uh, <laughs> Rosie Bond. It's from over Youngstown, Ohio, and she's going to share what Jesus Christ has done in her life. No, she wasn't a Christian all her life, but she'll tell you what she went through and how she became a believer. Rosie, welcome to Crossing Pass. Thank you. Very nice to be here. Thank you. Yes. Well, my story, my testimony of what Jesus did for me, mm -hmm. I was uh, raised in Louisville, Ohio like a little village there and got married and moved to Hillsville, Pennsylvania. And I was there for a while. And there was a Avon lady, her name was Linda. And she used to come around and sell Avon, but she was always just so happy. And one night she invited me to go to the barn, which is actually a barn in Mercer, Pennsylvania. And I had been seeking God. Not, not, uh, mm -hmm. not anything we talked about, but in my heart I was seeking. And so mm -hmm. she invited me on a Thursday night. I went with her. And it was actually a barn with hay. At Ralph and Louise Watson's yes, farm. Yes, <laughs> Know it well. Yes, and I walked in there and they were playing. There were uh, musicians and they were mm -hmm. uh, singing and the music was, I had never heard. I was born and raised Catholic. I'd never heard anything like that before. Mm -hmm. And I, and I looked around, and, and people were raising their hands and just so happy. And, well, I just followed suit. I didn't know what I was doing, but I raised my hands. And <laughs> I listened to the, the pastor there, and it was Jim Herb. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was preaching about Jesus. And uh, my friend, and, and he gave an altar call at that time and said, you know, would you, would you like to come forward and ask Jesus in your heart? So my friend leaned in and she said, would you like to go up? And I said, oh, okay. Uh -huh. And so I went forward and I knelt in, in, in the hay. And he led me in a prayer. I asked oh. Jesus to come in my heart. Beautiful. And I can't, there were no fireworks. There was no music. It was just a quiet invite. And we went home that night. And one thing I did notice over the next coming weeks, that Jesus took away my trucker mouth. I had foul mouth. Oh, my. And I just, it, it just, any, nothing I did, you know, to stop it myself, but it was gone. And uh, so I, I was married. I had three little boys I was raising. And, as, uh, and that was February 25th, 1975, that wow. I got saved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, during that year, I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I was baptized in water on Easter Sunday of that year. And then over the course of life, I found myself divorced and on my own, raising three little boys. Mm. And there was a pastor and his wife who allowed us to come, because I had to leave the home, to, to live in their home. They had three little boys. I had three little boys. And because they had a small parsonage, I had to sleep in the basement on a mattress. But I never felt sorry for myself because... When I see now where God has taken me, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, I tell everybody when I hear people complain or whine that their life is so hard, it's like, I slept on a mattress. 
I'm so happy and content what God has given me. I have a beautiful home, but I digress. So what happened during the, the course of all those years, uh -huh. I watched as my children grew up, and I, I was so reliant and on You were them. raising these children by yourself? Yes. As when you come yeah. home from Mercer, that's the same place that was Jesus, 74 and yes, Jesus, 76. Yes. It was like 50,000 people yes. up there, okay? It was an awesome time. Right. Now, when you come home, did your husband, did you tell him you got saved or something? Or I did. But that didn't make effect or didn't he? Do? Well, you know, at, at that point, um, he, he had gotten saved too, but I, I don't know, uh, you know, it, it, everybody chooses for their own. And so, you know, we went on and... and Till we didn't go on, yeah. <laughs> and I had to leave the home. So, but you never had, if you went to the barn, mm. when you grew up, didn't your mother and dad, anybody take you to church at all? I, I was I was raised Catholic, and I did go to catechism. But and you didn't hear anything about born again or anything like oh, that? Oh, no, no. Oh. But it was, uh, when I was young enough to remember Latin, when the mass was in Latin, and it was beautiful. It was yes. beautiful music. Mm. Yeah. But nothing about being born again, mm. nothing like that. So as, as the years went on, I became so reliant on God. I prayed about everything. Some might say, you know, she prays about everything. But when you realize those three lives are in your hand, and I had no education, I had no job, I had no home to live. But eventually, God got us housing, and we, were, we lived in Bessemer for a while. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, that became, because the, the, the rent and everything and the landlord, it became a little confusing. And so the only alternative for us was to move in the projects in Newcastle. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I remember saying to the Lord, well, you know, just kill me now because I thought the projects were death. And they weren't. They weren't at all. Before I got there, as the trucks were moving my belongings, there were women there that I had not even met yet putting my furniture in place. Wow. One lady I'd never known right. cooked us dinner. That, that's just amazing to me. Mm -hmm. So we settled in and we were there in the projects for eight years. How did you get involved in being a clown, if I can say that, to <laughs> okay. entertain people, okay? okay. Well, I, I started out, I uh, always worked with in, in children's church and always uh, just felt so led to work with little ones. <clears throat> and. Uh, I, I wrote scripts. All right, one, mm -hmm. of the, one of the pictures here that Joyce is holding up here, all right? Uh, uh, tell us about each picture, okay? Hold Alrighty. on. Okay. What's this? Tell one? Okay. Uh, one thing that the Lord put within me is the Let's ability to one. do face painting. And uh -huh. you basically just go and you, I ask them if they would like it on their cheek or on their hand. And I, I do butterflies or, or balloons mm -hmm. for boys footballs. They always ask for little manly things, Aww. but uh, while they're there, there's an opportunity. You have them for like maybe five, ten minutes, uh -huh. and you have that opportunity to pray quietly into their lives. And it's not anything, you know, that embarrasses anybody. Just just a little prayer for them. This looks like the same outfit here. Same honey. outfit. I was uh, there at a place in Newcastle called Challenges and doing face painting for, yeah. for little ones. And it's it's a non-traditional. I don't have the wig and the big red nose and <laughs> nothing like oh. that. What's this in here? That's yeah, cool. that? This picture here was actually taken Monday, this past Monday, at a church in Newcastle for Royal Family mm -hmm. Kids Club. I'm sorry, Royal Family Kids Camp, Kids where camp. where children go for the for the week to mm -hmm. swim and whatnot. And that was the Lion of Judah. And mm -hmm. I thought I'd take a snapshot. But, but how did you get involved in that? I mean, was there a you know did it, God, it, God reveal something to you? Uh, no, someone had actually asked me to to come and and do uh, face painting, and mm -hmm. I thought okay. So I went to Goodwill, got an outfit, and the Lord just kind of put everything together. Years ago, there was a word spoken over me that, that God would give me creativity. And he has. He has given me creativity. I marvel sometimes right. at the things that I create. So the outfit was put together, and I went out and I bought face painting. And I just started, bought some brushes and just started. And, and it's been a trip. And a, one passage of scripture I love is, the Bible says, I was young and now I'm old. 
and I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his mm -hmm. seed begging bread. Amen. And my children are all grown. They live in different parts. I have a son and daughter-in-law who's missionary to Scotland, and they've been there quite a while. My granddaughter married a young man over there. And my other two children are working in hospitals, doing fine. And God is awesome. And, and I personally want to tell, if there's any young women out there and you find yourself at this time in your life yes. alone, and you feel you have no one, you're raising your children on your own, you don't know where your next meal is coming from, you don't know what to get them mm -hmm. for Christmas, I urge you, trust Jesus. Give him a chance. He will do marvelous things in your life, things that you cannot believe. The years will go by. You'll have peace. And it's not, it's not all uh, roses. And I mean, there's, there were some tight times. Sometimes we had mm. just enough to eat, but we never went hungry. And my children are the loves of my life and my grandchildren. God did this. I have a beautiful home. God did this. I am here today. God did this. Thank you. That's wonderful. Do you think a lot of women have unforgiveness? <clears throat> I'm going to talk about yes, renewing the mind, okay? That's very important. You, you, you can't hold unforgiveness. You have to let that go. And it's easier said than done because you, 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 you think of it and you think, how, how dare I be put in this position? Mm -hmm. How dare I not? You know, it's... it's this is what God chooses for this part of my life. And there was, there was no time to hate. It's easy. You can go either way. You can hate, and then when you do that. Does anybody ever go through life without a problem? Nobody it's I know. how we deal with our problems, mm -hmm. what we do with them, mm -hmm. how we forgive, mm -hmm. how we live, how Absolutely. we just go on with what God's given us to do. Mm -hmm. The thing I remember the most is at, at one point when I was staying at the pastor and his wife's home, so I went away from the mattress where the children were sleeping, uh -huh. 2 o'clock in the morning, and I was at the bottom of the steps because I didn't really want and, and just praying. At 2 o'clock in the morning, uh -huh. that's when you reach heaven, when you find... You're faced tomorrow with something, and you know, you know, you need a decision, or you need to know where to go, what to do. You need to get a hold of him. Yeah. And, uh, and once you become born again, did that Bible become alive to you? Oh, alive. You, you just, you use that for every instance, and you go to that, and he'll give you, you everything you need. The Word of God is everything you need. If you need peace, it's in there. If you need strength, it's in there. If you need... He teaches our hands to war. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have to war as mothers with our children. I remember one time living in the projects, we had big steel doors down there, and my child was getting ready to go to school, all three of them, and mm -hmm. it's the first time. They had been, you know, in a smaller school, and I knew I was helpless. I could do nothing. I couldn't go to school with them and protect them, but I put my hand on that door, and I prayed, Lord, be with the boys, be with the boys. And that's all I could do, trust him enough, be with the boys. And, and even today, when I face something that's really hard, I'll put my hand on an imaginary door and I'll say, <laughs> Jesus, you know, that situation. Take care. Mm -hmm. Take and, he, care. and he always does. Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> There's a time in a person's life that they get down and out. And I remember that scripture I said that I wanted to give it to you, and the Lord gave it to me, it's uh, Matthew 6, 34. Mm -hmm. Take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. In other words, live one day at a time. One day at and that's what you had to do. You had to live one day at a time, right? It was too much to think about two days from now, a week from now. And, and I remember they were like my bodyguards. They were so tall and big, <laughs> big boys. And I mean, even school clothes. Had to pray for everything because, again, you do get income from the assistance from the government, but mm -hmm. it's really not enough that's, you know, you're not going to go out and, and buy anything but what you need. And God was so everything I needed. And then some. I mean, the children had bikes. They had fishing poles. God provided everything. And, and my family was instrumental. And I look back, and it was just like yesterday. It went like that. Did anybody shun you because you got a divorce? A few people did. But again, you just forgiveness. And, and mm -hmm. it's, it's, 
I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy. Sure. It's not right. a thing that you want to go through. Right. But Your real friends are there through thick and thin. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. I had friends when my first husband passed away, kind of ignored me. Just, mm -hmm. you know, I was the single woman in the crowd. Mm -hmm. And that's not right, but you just just go on. Right. Just go on. Don't, right. don't pay attention to the hurts because there's too much good yes. to worry about the bad. Yes, that, that saying, this too shall pass. Yeah. Like, yeah. Just think of it like we yeah. call crossing paths. That lady that sold, what, Avon? Yes. Right? Yes. Products, right? Yes. Her way of witnessing was not to sell products, but she in turn invited you to <laughs> Jim Herb's meeting in Mercer, right? Yes. yes. And uh, awesome on the Watson yes. farm out yeah. there. Yes. And I can remember when I was only saved for about six months to a year when I went up there too. And seeing 50,000 people with their arms in the air, I thought, there's something wrong here, boy. Oh, yeah. We just don't do that in my oh, church, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. and, uh, and, and back in the 70s, we, we were hippies. I mean, remember, with sandals and jeans. Uh, yeah. We uh, we were, and, and were we on fire for God? We'd pray for anybody. We, you know, don't get, it, don't get in our path, you know. Yeah. My own father, who was very protective of me and my sister, wanted to know what was going on out there because he knew I was gone, you know, I was, yeah. well, actually I was working at the gate letting cars in and out. Oh, the excitement of Why it. do you go out there? They're a bunch of whatever. <laughs> 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 he wasn't real happy with oh, it. Oh, it's a but, great time. But it all worked out and many, many, many young people got saved out there. Oh, absolutely. Many of them. Many Healings of them. and, oh, just the mm -hmm. excitement. Pastors but, come out of there. Have you ever saw that lady that, mm -hmm. That gave that planted the seed in your life. You ever saw? Her? Oh, I see her all the time. She yeah. she and her husband have an archery shop in uh, in uh, in Ed Edinburgh. Oh. I want to say Edinburgh because that's where my children. I'd like to get her on TV too, you know. <laughs> you should. You should. Uh -huh. But you know, sometimes people have led somebody to the Lord and they never even go back and thank them for oh. you know taking the time. You know. Oh, absolutely. It's just like we we've, uh, we've developed this program here, something to think about. Okay. And we have uh, Scott Mendes. He's a uh, world cha was a world champion bull rider. He's retired now. In fact, Joy said that <laughs> you, your favorite cowboy was Roy. Who was it? Roy Rod. And now it's uh, Scott Mendes. Right? After since I he, met Scott, since I he visited here and and he did know. the movie on my life. You know him and his company, right? Yes. And he was like anybody else. He said, and I believe that that what's happening today is a, is renewing of the mind. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. So. When you take today, you got excited about reading the Bible. You were never taught that, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go now to say something to think about with Scott Mendes, and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm very excited to give you something to think about today. It is a great privilege that I speak to you today about a life scripture that changed my life in my testimony. And I believe that some of those are the most effective because you've been able to walk through those and be overcoming of those. I want to read to you today from uh, Romans 12 too, but out of a little different translation. And this is about renewing your mind. God commissions us that we do exactly that. Romans 12 too, out of the New Living Translation says this, don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by the changing of the way that you think. Then you will know to learn God's will for your life, which is good and pleasing and is perfect. As I read that scripture to you today, I wanna to tell you that for my life, I love God in my heart. But at salvation, Jesus came into my heart. I was reborn. But the next step that I would have to take as a professional athlete was something that he left up to me, and that was the process of renewing your mind. When you're renewing your mind, you'll find out very quickly that we have to turn off the customs of the world, the things around us, the radio, the news reports, and what other people are saying about you, uh, because many times that is negative programming. They don't see what God sees in you, and then you must learn how to see yourself as God sees you. Let me read just a couple more scriptures to help bring this point home. You see, he tells us, he says uh, in Ephesians 4, he says this, he says, So I tell you this, to insist uh, uh, on insisting it in the Lord, you must no longer live as the Gentiles or who you were before you knew the Lord. 
do in the for uh, in the fertility of their thinking they were darkened in their understanding and separated from God uh, because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardness of their heart um, having all sensitivity they gave themselves over to sensualities as to be indulged in every kind of impurities uh, and, 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 and the lust of thereof. So you, however, did not come to Christ in that way. Surely you have heard them say that you were taught in him accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught in regards of your former way of life to put off the old self, which is being corrupted by its sinful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put off the old and also that you were created in uh, like God in true righteousness and holiness. As I read that scripture, it's very clear that God has uh, given us free will and that we should choose to put off the old way of thinking, to put off the old man, but to put on the new man. And one of the ways that you'll be able to do that is to renew your mind, to control your thoughts, and to put God's thoughts into your mind. And that will help you in your Christian walk to be able to produce fruit in your life, to be victorious, to stop the cursing that maybe your family is under uh, from things in the, uh, those in, in, that went before you and your family. To stop those things would be to renew your life and to develop a new vision for your life. The Bible says where there is no vision, people will perish. So I want to encourage you today not only to be a hearer of the word, but also to be a doer. So if you'll get alone with God, you'll fall on your knees humbly before him, and you say, Lord, help me to renew my mind. Help me to develop the picture of who you created me to be as your workmanship. I promise you that those God thoughts will begin to lead you into a place of victory, and you will be blessed in everything that you put your hand to. Renew your mind today, won't you? God bless. Thank you, Scott. You know, Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable service. And then it says, And be not conformed, conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, right, by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable to the Lord God. See, so when you pick up this Bible, what are you doing? You're reading it. Mm -hmm. You're transforming it into your mind. You never were taught to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. Most Bibles are under a tree on Christmas, like I'm lying right here. Mm -hmm. Most Bibles have dust on them, and mm -hmm. they're never read in a home. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're the same way, yeah. right? You're yeah, same. Right. So I want you to look into that camera now see mm -hmm. there, there's no perfect sinner's prayer by the way right. it isn't how long you pray right. it isn't how long you preach and it isn't even how long you witness mm -hmm. it's the anointing of the holy spirit mm -hmm. some people can say more in one minute and i can say in five that's right because the anointing of the holy spirit is so there's some woman i just feel like out there that she's been been beaten up torn down, has children, yes. and she needed to hear from you. Just look into that camera yes. there. I just want you to know, you don't have to say great words and thou and thy. You just have to talk to God. Hmm. He's your friend and he loves you so very much. Just tell him that you're sorry hmm. for everything you've done, all the sins in your life, to wash you clean. You know that he is the son of the living God. Yeah. He died and he rose again Hallelujah. for you. While he was dying, he saw your face. He saw your face and knows your name. Ask him to come into your heart. He'll do it. He loves you so much. Just talk to him. He loves you. Thank you. You know, Rosie is like anybody else, went through trials and tribulations. And you know, you cannot make it alone in this world today. But we here at Crossing Pass give out Bibles, no charge, pay for the freight, everything, no money. If there's somebody out there, even a larger Bible, we have that. And you can call the telephone number on the screen, mm -hmm. and Joyce and I will mail you out. Or you can talk to somebody, you know, 
God is no respecter of person, people. If he can do that for me and Joyce and you, he can do it for you. Do it for I him. love it when I pick up the word of God and it, I say, this, that's about me. That Bible's about me. Now, I don't like to admit this, but certain things in there, I just, you know, he's talking about me. I don't know about you. <laughs> but when I got rid of my pride 43 years ago, and believe me, I put That's down the bottle. A new person, huh? And I poked up the Bible. A new, a new person. person. A new creation in Christ. A new creature. Mm. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for the people out there today that are just witnessing in their best way they can. Everybody's different. Mm -hmm. They support us, and you can. We need support, or we may not be on the air too long in certain areas. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm still going to tell you one thing. Jesus loves you. Amen. And he can forgive you, mm -hmm. and he can forget. Mm -hmm. And you know what? It's hard for us to accept us men, especially men sometimes, that you can be set free according to John 3.3 3 and 1 Peter 1.23. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you something. Joyce loves you. I love you. She loves you. Rose loves you. Most too. important of all, mm -hmm. Jesus loves you. Tell somebody about Jesus first and crossing paths second. God bless you. When you support Crossing Paths, you're helping to release the power of testimony. There's many people who know about God, but they don't know Him personally. They don't know His true nature, and they don't know His heart. The stories that we bring you each week testify to the power of God and to the love of God. Through these testimonies, people all over the country are getting to know the Lord and developing a hunger to know Him more. When that relationship becomes alive, it's clear to see that no person or no situation is too far gone for the power of God. I like to share with people that it's very important to know who you are in Christ because that day, if that was me laying there, I know that I would have missed uh, heaven. Revelation 12, 11 says, and they overcame him, referring to the devil, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. God is still the same. He's still this, God's word is still the same. They say times are changing. Times are changing, but God is still the same. <laughs> it's, it's a no-brainer for me. You don't have to have a doctor degree to know oh. that God is good. He loves sinners. He just does not like to sin. When you partner with Crossing Paths and sow a seed into this ministry, you are helping us get the power of the testimony and the gospel over the airwaves. This will help people understand better who God is and connect them to the plans He has for them. Please call us today and support this vision.